Howdy folks, it's time for another math video. Yes! Are you as excited as I am? Because I'm pretty excited. Yesterday, I think, Nate the Mathematics Guy posted a video about the Monty Hall problem, which is one of my favorite problems in probability. And then WebSnarf posted a response to that one, um, expanding on the problem a little bit and talking about some other interpretations of it. And my video is going to pick up where WebSnarf's video left off. I'll be summarizing what happened in both of those videos briefly, but if you're not familiar with the problem or if you just really want to understand what's going on, I highly recommend watching both of their videos because they're both quite good and they explain the problem a lot more fully than I'm going to. The basic problem is that you're on the game show, Let's Make a Deal, which you might be familiar with if you're from the US, and there are three doors. Behind one of the doors is a prize. So you're on the show and you pick a door and then the host, Monty Hall, opens one of the other doors to show that there's no prize behind it and asks you if you'd like to switch to the other unopened door. The question, as posed by Marilyn Boss Savant in her column, famously, um, is should you switch? Is it better to switch to that door or should you stay where you are? Um, and at first glance, it looks like maybe it doesn't matter because there are two doors and the prize is behind one of them, so maybe it's a 50-50 shot. Um, but as Nate, the mathematics guy, explained, it's actually better to switch. And the short explanation of that is that if you pick the right door in the first place, then you're better off staying. If you pick the wrong door in the first place, then you're better off switching. And what's the probability that you pick the wrong door? two-thirds. So, there's a two-thirds probability that you'll win if you switch. Okay, um, so that's kind of the official answer, and that's the answer that Marilyn gave in her column, um, and a lot of people got it wrong. WebSnarf pointed out that the problem is not well-defined, really, um, or not very clearly stated. That there are two assumptions that you have to make in order for that solution to be correct. One assumption is that Monty Hall does not give you any information by which door he chooses. He always picks a random door. The second um, assumption is that he will always give you the option to switch. In WebSnarf's video, he demonstrated what would happen if you violated each of those conditions. So first of all, he demonstrated that if Monty is giving you information, is giving the contestant information, um, by choosing a particular door, um, either because he is intentionally colluding with you or because he is just deterministic, because he always does the same thing. If you watch the show over and over again, you'll see that he always does the same thing. Um, and Websnarf, WebSnarf's example was that Monty might always choose the leftmost door that he possibly could. That's one thing he could do. Um, and he demonstrated that um, even if he does this, the best strategy that you can use in that case will still only get you a two-thirds probability of winning. Okay, so then he looked at the other situation, or the other assumption. He said, what if the producers of the show wanted to minimize the number of times that they had to actually award a prize while still keeping the game exciting? So they told Monty, if the contestant picks the right door, then always offer them the switch. If they pick the wrong door, then flip a coin in your head, however that works, and half of the time, let them switch, and half of the time, just stick them with their bad answer. Um, and he showed that, in that case, it actually doesn't matter whether you switch or stay. <clears throat> Excuse me, it doesn't matter whether you switch or stay. Um, each of those has a one-third probability of winning. And his video ended there. Um, that raised the question for me of, what happens if you violate both conditions at the same time? What if the producers do that same thing that they did before, um, and Monty follows their strategy exactly as he should. Um, if you pick the right door, he lets you switch. If you pick the wrong door, half the time he lets you switch and half the time he doesn't. But Monty also gives the player information by choosing a particular door. He does not choose randomly. And I'm going to say the same thing, that he always picks the leftmost door that he can. What would happen? Well, We've got a diagram. I've used the same diagram that WebSnarf used, so it'll look familiar. 
Um, here's the situation. These are the three basic um, possibilities. So this is door one, door two, door three. Each row in this picture represents uh, one possibility of what might happen. The star is where the prize is. All right. So um, and we say without loss of generality that you always pick door number one. So in general, one third of the time the prize will be behind door one. One third of the time it'll be be behind door two, and one third of the time it's behind door three. Okay. Um, then in the second twist that Websnar threw in, he said, well, let's say that half the time, Moni, half the time that you choose wrongly, Moni's just going to stick you with it. So that takes away one-sixth of the probabilities from each of these and puts it down here. So overall, these are kind of our, our final probabilities so far. All right, so one-third of the time this happens, one-sixth, 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 one-sixth. All right. Um... So now let's add in the condition that Monty will always choose the leftmost door that he possibly can. Um, all right, so here it doesn't change these. He just says you're stuck. He doesn't open any doors. Here, um, in this one, you've picked door one and the prize is behind door one. So he can choose either door two or door three, and he's going to open door two. All right, in this one, he doesn't have a choice. You pick door one, and the prize is here, so he has to pick door three. And here, he again doesn't have a choice. He has to pick door two. Okay. So, now let's see how our two strategies so far would play out. We have always switch and always stay. Um, so, in this case, you've picked door one, he's opened door two. If you switch, you're going to lose. This is, this, this is pretty much the same thing that WebSnarf did. Alright, so if you switch, you're going to lose. If you stay, you win. Here, if you switch, you win. Stay, you lose, switch, you win, stay, you lose. And in these cases, you're going to lose every single time. Okay, so that's what we've got. And as before, we add up our probabilities of winning and losing. So for the switch strategy, well, we've got a one-sixth chance of winning, another one-sixth chance of winning. So that's one-third win. All right, if we stay, here we've got a one-third chance of winning in this case and then we're gonna lose with everything else. So, one third chance of winning. All right, so so far it's the same as if he picked the doors randomly. But, can we do better than this? Always switch and always stay are not our only options. Let's look at what happens from the player's perspective. All right, from, from my perspective, if I'm the player, um, I'll pick door one, and then one of three things will happen. Either I'll lose right away, in which case, I can't do anything about that, I just lose. Or Monty will open door two, or he'll open door three. I can do different things when he does that. Let's look at our situations. So if he opens door three, I must be in this case right here. This is the only possibility. If he opens door three, it must be because the prize is behind door two. Otherwise, he would have opened this one. So if he opens door three, I should switch, and I'm guaranteed to win if I switch. All right, if he opens door two, I'm either in this possibility or in this possibility. If I'm up here, I'll win if I stay. If I'm down here, I'll win if I switch. But notice that I'm twice as likely to be in this case as this one, because this has a one-third chance of happening overall, and this has a one-sixth chance of happening. So if he opens door two, I should stay because it's more likely that this scenario will be in play. So our strategy will be to switch, if and only if, Monty opens door three. So let's put that up here. Doo -doo -doo. All right, new strategy. We're gonna switch if he opens door three. Now let's see what happens with that strategy. All right, well, in the first situation, he opened door two, so we stay, and we win. Awesome. Second scenario, he opens door three, we switch, and we win. In the third scenario, he opens door two, we stay, and we lose. All right, and down here, we still lose, right? All right, so now if we add these up, we have one-third win plus one-sixth win is one half win. 
check that out. So, if both of those assumptions are violated, if the producers set up a scheme like this, where Monty doesn't always let you switch, and if Monty behaves deterministically, if he always picks the door on the left, and if we know both of these things beforehand, which we could figure out if we watched enough games, then it's actually better not to switch or to stay, but to switch if he chooses door three. And in that case, we can uh, win half of the time, whereas with pure switching or pure staying, we would only win one third of the time. So, <laughs> there are all sorts of crazy possibilities for this problem. It's not quite as simple as Marilyn Boss Savant um, told everyone. <laughs> you have to be really careful in how you define the problem. And that's actually not all that you can do, right? Because you could say, well, okay, the producers might realize that, and if they know that Monty is um, colluding with the players so that he always does the same thing, there could be a way that they could set up a scheme to, again, reduce your probability of winning below one half. Um, I haven't thought about that very much, so I don't know um, if they can do that or what sort of scheme they might employ. But if any of you guys want to try that, um, go for it. So thanks to Nate and Paul for making their great videos that allowed me to make mine. Um, I hope these all kind of go together. And yeah, yay math. Bye, kids. Howdy, folks. I know. I know. Mama keeps messing up her video. Yes, she does. Say hi to the camera. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. My name is Sammy. Are you good at math, Sam? You like Monty Hall? <laughs> Not enthusiastic. Okay, say bye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm horrible. Okay, go sit down. There you go. Okay, mom's gonna make her video now. She's not gonna mess it up. <laughs>